Good evening. Welcome to State of Business. You are with me, Madhusha Thavapala Kumar. Let's take a look at tonight's headlines first. <music> Minister Samar Singh says it will take four to five months to enjoy GSP plus benefits. And study finds domestic barriers obstruct growth of agri-exports. And now the news in details. Minister Mahinda Samar Singh says the export revenue of the government sector would rise by $1 billion within two years with the activation of the GSB+. Addressing the media, he pointed out that the government is obliged to implement the international conventions in order to keep it further. May June GSP plus May GSP plus Sahani, Labaduna, Passet, Nirantarim, Samaloch and Ativeno, a bargat, a Samutin, Kriavat and Agman, a picker to the Gurno the Guinea. The Mema may Dunakila, Eka, Tavaru, Hatagata, Pahakata, Abra Lab, Sadhatam Labuna Guinea, Capita, Kian de Bet, Mema by a bargata, a game, a pita, Tavadurata, a Kalayu Deval. Api Karane Bendi Nune Eva Kriavat and Nangman Nuni Ekai Apira J Stavare. Former COP chairman and leader of the Communist Party, Duguna Sekara states that the central bank bond scam will aggravate Sri Lanka's debt crisis. The latest COP report on the bond scam will be debated in Parliament next week. He expressed his views addressing the media in Colombo today. All what I have dis I discovered during the course of my in investigation has been completely confirmed by Handunetti report. Now, both my report and Handunetti report firmly confirmed the correctness of our in conclusions. I must look at this report from a political economic viewpoint. But this relates to public debt. We don't have sufficient money in the treasury to repay our loans. That is a crisis. So we have got into the debt trap now. So now that the matter is before the parliament, parliament has to debate it because we expect the MPs to rise above other prejudices and consciously and try to contribute to the parliament and to the people with their knowledge to bring about an end to these scandals and scams. Speaking further, he said Sri Lanka should reform countries' tax policies to minimize the burden on the common man. Reconsider our taxation policy. Already, according to the Department of Statistics, which released, which are really released two days back, 10% of our rich people have increased their profits income by 15%. So there's massive tax evasion in the country. Instead of taxing the rich people, they are through wet. They are putting all the burdens on the people who can't afford. Their purchasing power is going day by day. And as a result, what happened is we have to go in for borrowing. So the taxation policy and the public debt is uh, interconnected. And we'll have to take a policy decision. The government must consider this as quite a part of taking action against the wrongdoers. Review the policy of borrowing. We know what happened to Greece. See you after this break. Welcome back. A new study has found that domestic barriers are obstructing the growth of Sri Lanka's agri-exports. The joint study has been conducted by Verite Research and Lanka Fruits and Vegetable Producers, Processors and Exporters Association. We want to make a very meaningful contribution to a, an important national endeavor where 30% of our population is involved in agriculture. Uh, the contribution to GDP is around 13%. So whatever improvements we can make to both uh, the population as well as to the exports is going to be significant. And uh, as we are looking at making so many free trade agreements, we should also look inwards and see how we can improve our systems. 
and our competitiveness in um, facing uh, challenges and opportunities. The study was titled Agri Exports What's Holding Sri Lanka Back? The Effects of Domestic Non Tariff Barriers on Agricultural Export Growth. It has identified three types of domestic barriers that the export sector faces when dealing with border agencies in Sri Lanka, regulatory barriers, administrative barriers and information barriers. It is found that agri-exports, especially perishables, suffer the greatest difficulty within the country, not outside. Often, exporters get to the port, get to the airport, and realize that the rules, the fees, the, the, the procedures have changed, and they didn't know. You're carrying perishable exports, you have no choice. You have to comply. Enormous costs, enormous difficulties, and often what happens is exporters give up. This is why Sri Lankan exports have fallen from 33% of GDP to 12.7% of GDP. So, you know, you had to ask what are some of the drivers of this problem? And what we are finding is that it's so difficult at Sri Lanka, inside Sri Lanka's own border to get the information you need to get through the administrative procedures or even to have the right regulations in place. And this is damaging the prospects of our exporters in an enormous way. And it is really a critical problem. National Savings Bank has relaunched its flagship three savings account for the benefit of the Sri Lankan women. This savings product was initially introduced by the NSB in 2002. A three account could be opened through any post office throughout the country now. Any woman can open this account with a minimum deposit of 500 rupees. We have a responsibility in ensuring that we propagate the habit of savings amongst the majority of our country. Females constitute anything between 52 to 57 percent of our population. And that's why we have placed importance of this relaunch of this very important product stream. I wish we could have relaunched this six months ago or even one year ago, but nevertheless, I think we have carefully thought through some of the benefits and today we are relaunching three. Let's take a look at the stocks after this break. Welcome back. The trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange closed in red as a result of price losses in counters such as John Kales Holdings, Alsari Hospital Holdings and Sri Lanka Telecom. The All Share Price Index dropped 20.11 points to close at 6,165 and S&PSL 20 Index dipped 4.66 points to close the session at 3,493. Block trades were witnessed in Royal Ceramics, Hamas Holdings, Softlogic Holdings and John Cale's Holdings. Meanwhile, foreigners remained active, closing as net sellers, mainly due to foreign sales in John Cale's Holdings. The turnover was 1.5 billion rupees and 19 million shares were traded. Next is Forex Trades. Thank you for joining with us. We'll meet you tomorrow with more latest news. Until then, take care. Good night.